Hello there, and welcome to this week's edition of Money Matters, because after all, money does matter. So what are we talking about this week? This week, we're going to be talking about commercial property, and specifically, we're going to be talking about pensions. My name is Paul Smith from Touch and Education. If you've not watched this series before, and you decide you like it at the end, I'd appreciate it if you could subscribe, hit that notification bell, and maybe even tell one or two other people about it. So where am I today? I'm down in the south of France. I've got a villa down here and I absolutely love it down here. Commercial property and property in general has enabled me to live a lifestyle where I'm actually just down here picking out a berth for my newest company vehicle. You guessed it, a boat. So how about that? If you understand enough about commercial property and you know the right structures to use, no reason whatsoever why you can't have a company boat fully expensed charge to the company what a tax efficient way to have the little luxuries in life so if you want to know more let's understand first what is commercial property there are five main types i'm going to talk to you about some of them and let's start with shops retail that is one of the main five types of commercial property So whenever I start talking about commercial property, people instantly say, the death of the high street, we're all doomed. You can't go and buy a shop. Well, here is my first shop. This shop I bought many years ago now. It's in a place called Helensborough. But as you can see, it's a charity shop, shelter. It's right next door to Costa Coffee. But do you think that for one second that a charity like shelter is ever gonna go bust? Because I can't see it, personally speaking. The staff are all volunteers, so zero payroll, virtually. Few of the managers get paid. No business rates. Far from being put out of business by Amazon, this place is kept in business by Amazon. Why? Because as we all get new stuff delivered to our house, what do we do with the old stuff that Amazon's just replaced? We give it to the charity shop. So this is not only Amazon proof, it's recession proof. And I don't know about you, but I feel quite honored to be part of a charitable process, raising money for homeless people. As, as a landlord, I feel proud to have shelter as one of my tenants. Let's talk about two more of the main categories. Logistics. What's logistics? Well, it's warehouses. You know, hard standing for lorries. How do you think all of that Amazon internet shopping, you know, one of these big Amazon boxes here, how do you think that gets to your front door? It comes through warehouses. So the huge boom in internet shopping has seen a massive surge in the demand for logistics, for warehousing, for boxes. Go online and have a look at this. Google JLL, that's Jones Lang LaSalle, big box report. They put it out every quarter. You mind will be boggled when you see how much speculative, off-plan, prime, commercial property is being built to fulfill this boom. Number three, factories, industrial. I once had a 60,000 square foot unit up in Glasgow because I'd just come out of the whiskey industry and I'd actually taken on some whiskey bottling contracts. So I'd gone self-employed. I'd start on some of my own companies. So I needed some industrial space. What did I do with that? I put two whiskey bottling lines in it, literally. Rents for industrial are not only huge, but typically because industrial customers put loads of kit in, like this bottling line here, if you were gonna go and rent that as a customer, and if you're putting millions of pounds worth of kit in, you want it for as long as possible. So it's not unheard of for industrial leases to be 35 years. How about that? No voids, no maintenance, no insurance for 35 years. Oh, probably you might not know that yet. This is called an FRI lease. That stands for full repairing and insuring lease. What does that mean? It means that the tenant, not the landlord, is actually responsible for the maintenance. It means if anything breaks, if the roof falls off, if, that'd be a bit extreme, if someone steals the building, the tenant is legally responsible for fixing it. So it's not like being a residential landlord, where you know, if the boiler breaks, you've got to put your hand in your pocket and you've got to go and pay for it. 
So FRI leases are a thing of beauty. So I've talked a little bit about my uh, first shop and I hope I've opened your eyes to the fact that there's many different types of commercial property. Put in the comments below, what are the other two main types of commercial property? So I've given you retail, given you logistics, given you industrial, what else could they be? Because it's actually simpler to say what commercial property isn't. What commercial property isn't is residential. So anything that's not a flat or a house, or you know, where someone lives, by definition, it's commercial property. So, what's that? It's a harbour. Yeah, who owns it? How much rent is it? In fact, have a look here. See how many boats are in here? My boat will be in here soon. My boat, it's a Sunseeker Superhawk. Here it is. There's a picture of my Sunseeker Superhawk. Do you like it? That is a boat. Is that a commercial property? Well, not really, because it's a boat. When I put my boat in a space just like that, which I will be doing in just a very, very few short weeks, I've got to pay fees. I've got to rent that property. I've got to rent that space. It's not even property. Most of it's water. So how much do you think it's going to cost me to keep my boat in here? And by the way, this is a very, very good value marina. It's because I'm fortunate. This is one of the few marinas on the Riviera where it's actually the, uh, the town that owns it. So the mayor gets to decide who comes and who goes and whatever. But even in this extremely reduced price, really good value space, it's still going to cost me four and a half thousand euros a year. And my boat, I suppose you'd say, is uh, roughly an average boat. Because there's plenty in here that are a lot smaller and there's plenty in here that are a lot bigger. But I'm going to take you up top and show you just how many boats there are in here. And you do the maths. Four and a half thousand a pop times loads of boats. So why are people so scared of commercial property? Well, let's go back to my first shop. Many, many people would not have bought that shop because when I bought it, it was empty. But what I did is I worked with the landlord and I didn't buy it until I'd got that shelter contract for 10 years. Now I gave 250,000 pounds for that shop, or 249,000, I think it was, let's call it 250. In exchange for that, in year one, and every, every year since it's gone up, but in year one, I got 25,000 pounds. And that £25,000 was tax-free. What? What? Did you just say tax-free? Yes, I did. Because that commercial property is in my pension. Now, if I had my time again as a property investor, and I don't regret anything, but things I might do differently, if I knew about commercial property like I know about it now, there's a fair to middle in chance I never would have done residential. So you've heard about the crazy returns, but what was it specifically that prompted me to get into commercial property? Well, it's a combination of lack of stress, massive returns and tax-free. That's right, I said tax-free. So what was the specific prompt? I moved to Scotland. What's that got to do with it, Paul? Well, when I moved to Scotland, I left Whitbread, where I was in the uh, final salary pension scheme, and I joined Allied de Mech. And by the time I joined Allied de Mech, the final salary pension scheme was closed. So instead of allowing me to join the pension scheme, of course there wasn't one, they said, we will give you, I think it was 20% of my salary, because I was a, I was the managing director, I was a very, very senior guy there. Well, I was the most senior guy there. So 20% of my salary. And I was 40 years old at the time, I might've been a bit younger, late thirties maybe. And so that prompted me to do some research into, well, I'd never really thought about it before. I just put my pension contribution into my company pension, never even thought about it. And when I started digging into the world of private pensions and SIPs and SASs, I was like, wow, this is incredible. So I then moved my previous pension schemes using some, a technique called transfer value into my pension. And it was really, that was the trigger that got me into commercial property because I learned all sorts of things about pension and I learned that you could put commercial property into your pension. You can't put residential property into your pension. And that was, that's what got me going. Next thing I want to tell you about is another way of not paying tax over and above that pension stuff that I've just been talking to you about. And what 
really made the commercial property journey take off like a vertical rocket ship was uh, commercial conversions. So in 2003, 2004, uh, my wife Annika and myself did our very first ever commercial conversion. And it's this property here. This is Dunera, uh, what's now our home in Scotland. We bought it as a nursing home. It was a care home. It was a nine bedroom care home. And then it went to 1.2 million because a beautiful, I mean, look at these pictures of the inside now. It's quite nice, isn't it? And uh, you can well imagine, I'm sure, why uh, a very nicely done up, detached eight bedroom family home is worth one hell of a lot more than um, a fairly run down or very run down and closing care home business. If you're interested in learning about commercial conversions and how that can supercharge your business and you also want to learn about commercial property that you might actually want to keep as commercial property, I think mastering both together will give you the best possible returns. So in the text underneath this video, what I've got for you is a four part video series about the ins and outs of commercial property and commercial conversions and, and how I got started and what, what some of our students have done and, and all that kind of stuff. So, and it's all completely free. So just uh, what you need to do is click on the link and uh, pop in your email so we can send you the stuff and we're happy to send you uh, with my compliments a four part series to get you going in commercial conversions and the world of commercial property ASAP. wrapping up now just one last reminder if you want that series on commercial property and pensions and tax then just underneath the video there's a text box you might have to expand it uh, like where it says read more or whatever so just click on that uh, click on the link stick in your details and we'll get you sent out that full video series hope you've enjoyed this week's edition of money matters because as you know i think money matters from la port de la figurette it's where i am just down the hill from my house my house is on that hill behind me. You've been wonderful. I've been Paul, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye for now.